Hey, what's up everybody, and welcome to another episode of News Dose, where I keep you up to date with all of the latest gaming news. And it really seems like all people can talk about for the last few days is the Xbox Series X. It's starting to truly feel like next generation is right around the corner. But one of the things I think I've constantly been hearing about is the size of the Xbox SX. And I think people are a little confused on what the actual size of this thing is. I mean, it does look particularly very large in the picture, but it's actually not as big as what it appears. So I have some pictures for comparison's sake today that we'll talk about here in just a minute. The Pokemon Company was also in the news, and not about games, but rather this may involve scary news for leakers. Then there is the Oculus Rift and Quest, which is being sold at an insane price right now, as well as the next Street Fighter V character has also been revealed, so stay tuned for all that as well. But to start the video off, let's check out these comparisons of Xbox Series X and other consoles, because I really do feel like there is a lot of confusion on this subject, and I'm looking to alleviate any kind of confusion that we have here. Now the credit for the pictures goes to Video Game Chronicles and Resetero for putting these renders together, but yeah, as you can see, when they all stand side by side, Xbox Series X isn't nearly as big as it looked in the original picture. Now it is very thick and probably twice as wide as any of the other current generation consoles, but it's not really so big that it shouldn't fit into your entertainment center. Here in the first picture, you're seeing it twice as wide as the original Xbox One, which would be the second largest, with the third being the PlayStation 4 Pro. Which that actually surprised me, I didn't realize how big the PS4 Pro was until this picture. Xbox Series also stands second for the tallest console, but only barely over the PlayStation 4 Pro. Though I think it's these next pictures where it becomes a little bit more obvious the Xbox Series X isn't nearly as big as it appears, because when you look at it each from the overview, while they're sitting horizontally, because yes, the Xbox SX can lay down, it's actually the smallest from this angle. I think that that is the most surprising thing here. And now I do want to mention that the reason that the Xbox SX is shaped the way it is is because it has a very large fan on the top, which is probably because it's a very powerful console, and they're trying to keep it as quiet and cool as they possibly can. Though this does beg the question, is there also a fan on the bottom? Because we haven't really seen that yet. But I do think that there is a real possibility that there is. I say this because there's actually feet on the bottom of the console, so I would say yeah, there probably is going to be a fan on the bottom as well, which will allow for more airflow while sitting in the horizontal position. And speaking of which, here is the final picture of where the Xbox Series X is faced towards you while it's laid down. I think that this will be the most popular way to sit on entertainment centers because most people I've ever seen does lay their consoles down horizontal and in this view it's actually not too bad. In this position it's almost like combining the Xbox One with the Xbox One X and I think it's listed at about 6 inches here which is about the length of your Xbox controller. So overall the size isn't nearly as big as what some of us originally thought and it should fit into most people's entertainment centers. I mean, even my entertainment center, which doesn't really have big compartments, can easily fit the Xbox SX in. But yeah, I just wanted to clear up a bit of confusion if there was any in the first place. And, and you gotta remember, this is an extremely powerful console, so it will be a bit larger than previous consoles, or at least in this generation. And speaking of the Xbox SX, there has been a bit of news on a possible title, which would be Forza Motorsports. Now, as you may know, Forza Motorsports has taken a little extra time to develop this time around as they add new stuff in, and generally they're just trying to improve it over Forza 7. So they will be adding several new features in, and they've kind of handed around to several of these features already, such as tire pressure and dynamic weather temperature. And according to the creative director Chris Asaki, they will be sharing more details next year. So with that said, I think we will likely see Forza 8 make its debut at E3 2020. And I wouldn't be surprised to see this be a launch title for the Xbox SX. I mean, we saw that with, I believe it was Forza 5 for the Xbox One, so I really wouldn't be surprised here if we do have a Forza launch title. For racing fans, this is great news, as really Forza has made a bit of a name for itself as being a top premier racing simulator, and arguably it is the best. 
Now moving on, the Pokemon game company made the news this weekend, and this is incredibly scary. See, we talked about this a little bit on the channel already, but not long ago we had learned that the Pokemon game company was seeking out the leakers who leaked the strategy guide images of Sword and Shield. I mean, there was a lot of negative press before the release of Sword and Shield, and a lot of this is linked to leakers. But this one in specific was actual pictures that was being shared across the different websites, and well, the Pokemon company was not happy about it and not long ago decided to take legal action towards these leakers, and even went so far to request both Discord as well as 4chan to reveal the identities of these individuals by giving up their IP addresses and other information by serving subpoenas. Well, it seems the Pokemon company won here and that Discord and 4chan now has to comply. This has got to be absolutely terrifying for those leakers. And I know there is mixed reactions on this subject. Some people believe that these leakers are wrong for breaking the trust of the Pokemon company and should have never shared these images in the first place while others believe it's no big deal and that the Pokemon company should just leave them alone. But here's the thing, I think what the Pokemon game company is doing here is setting an example of these leakers by going after them. I mean, yes, Sword and Shield is selling at a record-breaking pace, so when po the Pokemon game company says that the leakers did irreparable damage, it may not come off with the same impact. But you can also say that the leakers are in the wrong here, and not every company is just going to be okay with these leaks. I'll take Nintendo as an example here, which went after ROM websites in recent years and was suing these websites for millions of dollars. Yeah, that's a scary thing, which I think is Nintendo's goal, to keep other people from doing the same thing in the future. I think that that is the exact same strategy for the Pokemon game company, where they are likely to sue for millions to threaten leakers from doing this for future releases. I mean, this is something that leakers need to be aware of, and that not every company will be okay with you just leaking out information. Now, as for the actual people being sued, I'm hoping it doesn't ruin their life. I believe that after being sued, the Pokemon company will probably come to some kind of agreement with these people and let them off the hook, but rather they're trying to get this in the news as a deterrent for future leakers. But what do you think? Are you with or against the Pokemon company? Let me know in the comments below. In other news, PC virtual reality headsets are really starting to take off, and I think that this is in direct correlation with Half-Life Alex. I think Half-Life Alex may have been a bigger announcement than any of us even realized. I mean, yes, we all kind of knew it was huge to have Half-Life finally return, but since it was announced, the Valve Index, the Steam virtual reality headset that is $1,000, has been selling out, and it's now hard to obtain one. But now we're also seeing the same thing with the Oculus Quest and the Oculus Rift. The Quest is now selling for up to $1,000 on Amazon because it's in such high demand right now, whereas the Oculus Rift S is selling for $700. Now this is in comparison to their original price of $400, so that is a crazy, crazy high increase, and that is directly related to how much they're in demand right now. Now the main question is, how long will they be in short supply for? Because we do have to remember that this is the holiday season and that Half-Life Alex doesn't release until March. So will they be more readily available by that time? I think yes, there is a good possibility as the holiday winds down. With that said, I would caution buyers to pick up the Oculus headset at these prices. I may be wrong here, but I'd personally just hold off until they get more in stock. You can always go with mixed windows reality headsets as well if you really need one right now. Though I will say this, one good thing about the Oculus devices are, is there is plenty of good exclusive games such as Stormlands, Asgard's Wrath, and Lone Echo. Now you can actually play these with an unofficial mod for other headsets, but either way, this might be the first big push for PC VR headsets, so virtual reality owners, rejoice! Now the last thing I want to talk about briefly is Street Fighter V, which is getting a new character, which is a redesign of the Street Fighter IV villain, Seth. Seth will be coming to the Champion Edition on February 14th, and Seth being in the game makes it to where every Street Fighter villain is now in Street Fighter V, so that's pretty cool. Now do keep in mind that Seth is a redesigned character here, 
but you can also play the original design with a different costume. So even if you like the original look more, you don't have to be too disappointed because you can actually play the nostalgia version. Anyways though, that's it for this video, but if you liked the video, don't forget to hit that bell notification and subscribe button. Peace out.